Well, I went up to him. It was the last time that I could see him because I was told that Friday there would be no court. And therefore, I thought at least I would like to have a picture with him before I left Germany. And I looked to the court. The court was uh, recessing for that day. And Oscar was still there. My attorney asked permission from his attorneys that I wanted to approach him. And I gave him my cell phone to take a picture of me with Oscar. Well, I uh, reached out to shake his hand and he wanted to stand up. And I said, please don't do that. Because on the first day, he fainted as he stood up too fast. And I was holding on to a guy who was probably twice my size and I couldn't hold on to him. He was falling, so I didn't want the same experience again. So I said, just please sit. And so I told him that I felt that it was very important that he continue with the trial, but also to impress the neo-Nazis that it happened, that he was there and he could testify to the horrors that it created for everybody for the victims and the victimizers. There were no winners in Auschwitz or in the Nazi regime. And that he now, as a former perpetrator, can convince neo-Nazi misguided young people to stop their stupidity and crimes because it will not lead anywhere. Mm. If I, the survivor, talks about it, they dismiss me. I am just a Jewish survivor that they don't believe anyway. Therefore, he has a very important role. And as I was trying to keep passing my point, he bent down, grabbed me, and gave me a hug and a kiss on my cheek. Some people... I was a little bit, a little bit startled, but uh, looking back at it, it was a very innocent, very... It wasn't planned. I don't think he planned. Mm. I think it was something that he reacted to my presence. Yes. And if I want to describe it, I prefer a hug and a kiss over what he would have done to me in Auschwitz.